Welcome, I'm Martine. I'm the coordinator for Financial Aid and Student Awards Office. Um, I see here that we have Mohammed. Thank you so much for joining us today. We're just gonna give it a few more minutes here until others um, join. But in the meantime, I will uh, pass it on to my co-host, Nicholas. Hello everyone, and specifically to every one person that we have joining us today. Uh, we're gonna to be going over some great opportunities to have a discussion in regards to some tips that we've explored in the past and some adjustments to what we used to suggest that people do to be able to make sure that they can save as much money as possible or spend as little as possible, depending on which way you wanna look at it. Uh, if you have any questions along the way, I know that we're planning to have a Q&A session at the very end. If something's really burning and you just have to ask right away, feel free to use the chat option at the bottom of your screen. And we'll be able to uh, try to incorporate that uh, as we go through some of the points we'd like to make, or we'll stop for a moment to address those questions as well. As I said earlier, my name is Nicholas. I've been a financial aid officer at Algonquin College going on over seven years now. In the course of the time that I've been doing this role, I've been fortunate enough to meet a lot of students. And we have had the privilege of being able to pick up some top tips. One year, we even opened it up to our, our student body to say, what have been some top tips that you've experienced that you'd like to share? And these are some of the five that we would recommend that you consider whenever uh, planning some of your education and how, how to make it through as uh, financially responsible as possible. Now, if you have any questions or if you have any comments you'd care to share throughout the course of the presentation, please feel free to type it in at the bottom of your screen. screen. My colleague Martin will be more than happy to be able to uh, bring them to my attention to make sure that we can get any questions or, or comments shared and answered. All right, so let's begin. One of our first tips that we have is um, take out cash because once it's spent, it is gone. Now, it's a little weird to be thinking about that in this day and age. So really what we're gonna suggest instead, since cash is not something we can use in the pandemic as well as we used to be able to, is try looking to make a budget in advance and using an app to be able to assist you. There are a lot of free apps that are out there now. And so we strongly recommend to find one that matches your needs and what you're willing to invest in. So two that we've seen quite frequently used and to great review would be Mint or YNAB, which is you need a budget. Alternatively, if you're not comfortable sharing that type of information with a third party app, you can also work with your banking apps. A lot of banking apps now will actually be able to show you different trends of how and where you spend your money. So since cash may not be your first choice anymore because we're kind of all at home, if you're using electronic means, it would be an opportunity for you to be able to track your spending to see where your money is going. We often recommend keeping track of how you spend your money over the course of several months before you go, come to school or while you're in school to see what kind of trends there are. It helps you budget and plan as you go through your program. Another top tip that we have is cutting out coupons. Again, we're not in a physical space anymore, so that's not as relevant as it used to be, but browser add-ons like Honey can be very helpful. If you're doing online shopping, there's often an opportunity to be able to put in discount codes or budget codes to be able to save a little bit of extra. Maybe you'll be saving 20%, maybe you'll be getting free shipping. It's important to use those opportunities to save where and whenever you can. In fact, if you're still doing in-person shopping, some stores will have discount days as well too. Bulk Barn, for instance, offers discount days for seniors, which I'm guessing we don't have too many in our group today, but also for student days as well too. So if you're able to present your student card, either the Algonquin College issue one or the student saver card, it could be an opportunity to save anywhere between five to 15%, depending on where you shop. Speaking of shopping responsibly, shopping the sales is always important. Many retailers will actually let you have an online account where you can put certain items on alert. So for instance, Canadian Tire, if there's a hammer you just really, really wanna have at home, then you can actually say, when this hammer comes on sale, please notify me by email. Now, sometimes you don't need a hammer for your, your whole life. They don't take up a lot of space, but other items can. And so you may wanna look at renting items or borrowing items from people that you know. It's a great way to be able to enjoy something without having the responsibility of its ownership or its cost. For one thing that I've done for years is I used to be able to order books online and then it dawned on me, oh wait, there's a library. Libraries are a fantastic way to be able to get your reading up to snuff without actually having to spend $30 a book or worrying about keeping it in your bookcase afterwards. There are also other library services in Ottawa as well too. There are tool libraries and there are also free cycle opportunities as well. Ottawa has a very vibrant free cycle community. So if you haven't had the privilege of being able to participate before, I'd strongly encourage you to consider that as an option. 
also, you want to consider what services can be available to you as a student for free. Now, sometimes that can be something as simple as a student bank account. A student bank account is great because it'll help you reduce your fees and costs. It'll also be an opportunity for you to be able to consider what long-term financial plans you want to put in place because some will offer financial counseling and or student lines of credit. The college also offers many services for free, such as the one you're participating in today. There are also other services in regards to counseling, and you can also do workshops uh, that are taken care of on the college dime. So if you're interested in learning more, I would strongly encourage you to look at the student support services to see what services they have that could be offered to you, as well as the student association also offers great opportunities as well. Now, one thing we used to say all the time is eat at home. Nowadays, you can't eat anywhere else really. So what we would consider doing is consider not using the delivery apps too much because those can really add up in the cost. Instead, what I'd challenge you to do is think of menu planning. Now we always talk about budgeting and people have heard about budgeting for a long time, but food budgeting is another thing that you could do too. You can consider what you want your menu planning to be and shop accordingly. There are great online tools such as Rebies or Flip to be able to find different grocery store items that could be available to you. As I had mentioned earlier, Bulk Barn does do a discount for people whenever they're looking to do shopping one day a week. And at College Square, there's a Loblaws there. They also have a student appreciation day. And they would also be offering discounts at least one day a week. Now, if you tie that in with your grocery sales that you can find, that could add up to some savings. And even more, if you do price matching. There are some stores still in Ottawa that do grocery price matching still. So if you're interested, double check to see how you can make that work. And I will speak from experience. If you do online app use, such as with Flip or Rebe, if you show them the flyer digitally, as opposed to the old fashioned paper kind, they will match that price. And some places will even beat it by 10%. Now, one thing that always comes up is bring your own coffee. Now, in these days, you're not really going anywhere, but bringing your own coffee can still be something that can save a lot of money when we get back to a new normal. If you think of what a latte costs these days, they're not very affordable. You're looking at seven, maybe $8, depending if you like that fancy coconut milk stuff. If you make your own lattes at home and you're at home a lot more than used to be, it could give you more time to be able to do so. It gives you the chance to be able to think of how you can plan your day to be able to make small and incremental savings as you go through. My apologies. Now, I would also recommend that you can think of other opportunities that you could do. Now, maybe it's going to be bringing your own lunch. It could be packing a picnic. Again, whenever the weather and the pandemic seems to subside to be something a little bit kinder to be able to do so. But those are some of our five top tips. Now I'm gonna open it up to Martin because I believe she might have a couple of things that she'd like to add as well. Martin, if you'd be so kind. Hi everyone. Thanks again so much for joining us. Um, so we'd like to open it up to the floor and we would love to hear from you, um, whether you wanna use the chat or um, you'd like to make your own comment and we unmute you so that you can share what your top tips are for saving or what you plan on doing uh, to save during the term. Part of uh, saving, um, an important piece of it is budgeting. And so uh, as Nick mentioned, if you can use an online budgeting app or potentially to uh, contact your assigned financial aid officer to discuss um, tools that you can use to budget, you'll better understand what you're spending your money on and where you could potentially make cuts and uh, where you can save. So we'll open it up to questions um, or if you just wanna share with us your top tip, we'd love to hear from you. So um, we will just take a look at the chat here. Anybody got any top tips or any questions? One of the examples that we had heard in the past was shopping in bulk. So often people will go to Costco and they'll buy a large item of something. So perhaps maybe 50 pounds of potatoes. It's unlikely that most people alone will get through a 50 pound bag of potatoes, but <laughs> If you plan with other people, you can actually do group sharing as well. So I, I spoke to earlier about how there are opportunities for you to be able to borrow or share. 
a great opportunity that I've heard of and I've seen to great effect is whenever people go in for bulk items and then they share those items. Uh, so for instance, a great opportunity there again would be the bulk burn items that you could be able to purchase and then redistributing those uh, uh, amongst a group of people. And I see Mohammed has something that he'd like to share as well. Yes, so Mohammed here says Black Friday for buying electronics is cheaper and 100% that's taking advantage of a great deal um, for sure. Great suggestion. Mm -hmm. And it's very important to think about sales cycles as well too. If you know that there's gonna be a certain sale item or a time that items will come on sale more frequently than not, then you can plan at your budget accordingly. So right now we're not experiencing perhaps the best swimming weather. So swimsuits would not be in, in great um, demand in, in great right. demand or in great quantity, but you know at the end of August they could be. So if you are planning to be able to upgrade certain things in the future, that could be an opportunity for you to be able to say, well, if I plan and budget accordingly, then I'll be able to know when I need to purchase something for the upcoming year. And electronics are also a great example. If you have an older model computer and you know you will need to upgrade at some point, you can then work and plan on that to be able to make sure that when the time comes, you're ready. I can see Leanne has put up a great idea too, and that is points opportunities. Now, as she was saying, she's looking to get a new winter coat. She's probably gonna wait till the end of the season. Hopefully she has one now and she's not too, too cold where she is. At the end of the season is a great time to be able to pick up things that are no longer going to be necessary and then usually discounted. And points are a great opportunity as well. Now, I would always caution people to be careful with the point programs they go into. The reason being is there's a lot of fine print and you want a points program that matches what you're going to use. So if you were to pay attention to, let's say the air miles program, they may have a great plan for you, but if you don't plan on flying in the next couple of years, maybe the miles to travel by air, especially right now, may not be the best point system for you. So PC optimum points perhaps would be more appropriate, especially when tied in with other opportunities that exist for people. So it's always important to shop around. Martin's okay. just double checking to see if there's any any other and any additional comments that uh, people would care to share Martin I think we're all set um, so if you do want to get more information about uh, saving money you can always go to our website at uh, Algonquin College forward slash financial aid and review um, resources and under there we have some information on budgeting or like I suggested, you can also reach out to your assigned financial uh, officer for more information as well. Mm -hmm. So um, I would like to thank you all uh, for joining us today uh, for the Get to Know College, uh, five things you didn't know about saving money hosted by Financial Aid and Student Awards. Thank you so much. And uh, we will post a link in the chat shortly with our details so you can reach out to us if you have any other further questions. Thank you, Mohammed. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day.